All right, it's another day on the program held the living. I'm at this also, here. And today we're going to be looking at neglected tropical diseases. That is what we want to look at today. Okay, you may not know what this is all about. You may be wondering what we're talking about, but don't worry. I have two beautiful people in the studios who are going to be talking to us about this. More so that uh, especially the day has been set aside to create more awareness, to celebrate this day and to create more awareness so that you and I will understand what is going on. So join me as I make welcome Professor Christopher Mundy Okaka. is uh, a zoologist from, he has a BSc in zoology from Lagos State University. He's a PhD in parasitology, University of Leeds in England. And uh, he's back home and a poor in Nigeria. He has worked in several tertiary institutions, which includes um, Ondo State University, Adweke, the Department of Biological Sciences, University of Lorraine, the University of Benin, he retired in 2022. He's a fellow of several academic societies, which includes Zoological Society of Nigeria, Parasitology and Public Health Society of Nigeria, Society for Experimental Biology, and he has published over 80 articles. Prof, it's a pleasure to have you join us today. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, we also have uh, another person in the studio, and uh, we're going to be introducing her in a moment. Uh, it's a huge pleasure to also have her in the studio. Dr. Ehizogi Adeyemi. She is the Director of Medical Lab Sci Services from the University of Benin Teaching Hospital. You know, our, our people here. She's also a Fellow of Parasitology and Public Health Society of Nigeria, a Fellow Medical Laboratory Scientist of Nigeria, Coordinator Medical Laboratory Services, Coordinator Mortuary Services, UBTA. She, is a P she has a PhD in Medical Parasitology 2013 from University of Benin. It's a pleasure to have you join us. So the studio is full, so I have good hands to talk about this uh, topic. So I'm going to start with Prof now. When we talk about neglected tropical diseases, exactly what are we talking about, Prof? <coughs> Thank you very much, ma'am. Now, the name actually is neglected tropical diseases. Hmm, neglected tropical diseases. We abbreviate it as NTD. NTD. Uh, neglected tropical diseases are the diseases that have been with us hmm. for a very long time. Okay. They cause a lot of uh, tissue damages. They can cripple. And in some cases, they lead to death. Hmm. But these diseases, so long as we just do a little treatment and we think we are okay, we have not done much work on them to clearly eliminate them. Okay. They are diseases we should not have in the society. Okay. They should be eliminated or they should be eradicated. Okay. Our work now is to sensitize people on how to get these diseases eradicated. Hmm. And the way to do that is simply prevention and control. Okay. It is not dr drugs can cure some mm. diseases, mm. we know that, but we also know nowadays that there are so many diseases mm. that have no cure. But okay. all diseases have prevention. have prevention. Okay, before we go to the preventive uh, uh, measures or preventive mechanism, is it possible for you to tell us some of these diseases so we know exactly. what we're dealing with? Exactly. Some of these diseases, in fact, almost all diseases in Africa mm. are neglected. Hmm. But the major ones are the ones we are concentrating on. Hmm. Something like malaria. Okay. Something like sleeping sickness disease. Hmm. Something like uh, river blindness disease. And a host of others. Okay. The World Health Organization has recognized a total of 28. 28 neglected, neglected diseases, diseases. That they are concentrating on. Hmm. That we are also concentrating on. Okay. But even common dysentery and diarrhea, they are neglected because the way they are caused, their causative organisms mm. have not been addressed. Mm. All we just do is simply treat, treat and then the person goes back to the same environment and, and gets infected all of the, 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 the So it's a neglect. Okay. 
All right, uh, Dr. Demi, let me ask you this one. Now, let's look at the signs and symptoms of common tropical, common neglected tropical diseases that uh, we live with every day. Well, uh, there are many, just mm. as uh, our prof had said, but primarily in our environment, we have come across uh, the river blindness, mm. you know, characterized with total ocular blindness, inability to see. And then there are some people characterized with uh, leopard skin. Okay, no, before the leopard skin, uh, what is the cause of this river blindness? Okay, river blindness is caused by a very tiny worm okay. transmitted by the black fly. Okay. And it is this black fly that carries this infective host and that when they bite uh, a, a, a person not infected, the person gets infected. Okay. And not necessarily not, bite on the eyes. No, 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 no not no. on the eyes. Any, no. any, any, part, any, of any the part, part of the body. Any mm. part of the body. Wow. Once this is done, it enters the bloodstream and then the process goes. Basically, it's characterized with the formation of nodules. Okay. And these nodules can appear any part, on any part of the body. Mm. And it depends on where they now finally deposit, mature, and grow. Mm. So from this stage, they start, um, yeah. they gather on those nodules. And once an, an infected person is beaten, somebody who is not infected gets infected with it mm. and it spreads. So it is when these nodules, likely deposit within the ocular region that results in mm -hmm. blindness and then sometimes the leopard skin, the stretching of the skin mm. due to some presentations. Leopard skin, I'm hearing that for the first time. How is that? Uh, you know how leopard skin? Oh, uh, yes, leopard skin, yes. Yes, uh, most times within the external region, the, the leg axis mm. and all that. A kind of discoloration, having multiple colors and all that. You know, and the people in most of these communities or those that are infected mm -hmm. always try to cover themselves up so that you don't uh, really see or notice it. Mm -hmm. You know, and, uh, then, and what's the cause of that one? It's just some of the manifestation characterized by the presence of these beautiful worms. I want mm -hmm. to call them beautiful worms <laughs> <laughs> residing. <laughs> worms that, uh, worm that can do so much damage to human beings. You can't call them beautiful. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's call, call them by the name which they should be called. They cause some depigmentation under the skin. The parasite mm -hmm. is actually found under the skin. Since they are subcutaneous, mm -hmm. they cause depigmentation. Okay. And because of that depigmentation, the person has Several oh, different colors, colors of the skin. Oh, skin. And we just call it leopard skin. skin. Wow. Yes. Now, this leopard skin, uh, 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 this uh, blindness and all of that, is it curable? Hmm. Well, Particularly <laughs> the, the river blindness thing, is it curable? At early stages, you can do small things about it. Mm. But at small. later stages, yes, yeah, small, very small. But at later stages, there's really nothing we can do about it. Mm. There's been a drug that has been developed for curing the disease. Yes. Uh, they call it ivermectin. Ivermectin tablets. But most of the cases are discovered at a later stage. So the parasite may be killed for some mm. of these depigmentations. So, so what are the early signs and symptoms that somebody should look out for? Because you, from little research and from talking to doctors for a very long time, we discovered that people don't present early. You know, human mm -hmm. beings don't present early in that the hospital. Great. They wait yes. till emergency. Yes. We have yes. this um, fire brigade approach to Tissues stop. We are not proactive when it comes to assessing medical health. We just wait till uh, quarter to go, so to speak. You know, using the straight language now, we wait a quarter to mm -hmm. go before. Uh, we rush our people to the hospital. It's quite sad. Yes, most cases it's is characterized sad. with uh, nodules. For those what, what is this nodules? The, it's what we regard as the deposition. Uh, no, we want to know so that somebody out there will, you know, I'm sure quite a number of us is wondering what these nodules are. Where they be nodules? Where these people the toxins? Nodules, nodules. Mm -hmm. We need to know what those things are so that uh, when we see, we should be able to like, okay, you need mm -hmm. medical attention. You know, those are just swellings on the skin. Okay. Those are some of the early signs. You see some swellings at different parts of the body. Of the body. They look like rashes. 
In fact, some rashes are also part of it. Mm. Some people don't take it as anything. When mm -hmm. they just see it, they neglect it, they leave it. We use the they use whatever and, uh, cream they can uh, use, thinking it will disappear. Mm. But within the body, the thing begins to manifest and show other symptoms like we mentioned earlier, mm. like all these, uh, it virtually results in blindness. Mm. And itchings in the body, those are the early signs, a lot of itchings in the body. Then eventually, it will result into blindness, it will result into that uh, leopard skin, and lizard skin hmm. effects. Then, in some cases, it results in the swellings of the of the testes, hmm. and the person gets an enlarged testicles. Yes. In case of males, in females, it could be enlarged their breasts, or so. But physically, the people still look okay. Hmm. And you must know that these diseases are suffered by villagers more. Yes. People in the cities, as soon as you begin to see rashes that are not going, you go to the doctor. But in the body. rural areas, these rashes just remain and it continues like that until it develops. Uh, you know, you know, talking about rural areas, many of them don't have access to good medical services. That is true. Because uh, I interviewed a couple of persons and they were made to understand that even in the um, uh, what do we call this little, little clinic, these health centers, in their health, health centers, centers yes. in their localities, you find only nurses. Exactly. No doctor. Sure. Yes. Just nurses. You know, mm. as scientists, who know all of this things that are happening in the rural area, are you people not doing anything to address this uh, shortfall of medical doctors in rural areas, rural hospitals, where most of these neglected tropical diseases arise from? Well, the, the, the onus rests basically on the government because some of the communities that most of us have been privileged in to work, mm. they have health centers, they have nurses, they have the doctors that come in once in a while. But basically, I think it's more of enlightenment and the attitude of the people, of the people. to their own health. Mm. Because like my prof said, if you have a small rashes mm. and you completely ignore then it becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. But basically, a lot of researches have been carried out in most of these communities, and they have all been mapped out as okay. endemic for particular uh, entities. Mm -hmm. So this awareness is there, mm -hmm. and government on its own, on its part, is doing a lot mm -hmm. in ensuring that the people adhere to simple rules okay. to keep we'll, we'll, themselves We'll come back protected. to the involvement of government in all of this. Let me take this question, you know, Prof. You, I stopped you from talking about the preventive measures. So let's go back to that now. What are the preventive measures? Because prevention, they say, is better, better than, than cure. cure. Mm. Thank you very much. See, there are various preventive measures. Okay. And it depends on the kind of disease. Okay. I told you just now that there are so many of these diseases that we collectively call mm. uh, neglected, neglected tropical, tropical diseases. diseases. Now, we can categorize them into two depending on their mode of infection. Okay. Those that require vectors, okay. like mosquitoes and scissor flies and the rest of them to transmit, mm. their preventive measures could simply just be avoiding the bite of those flies, using mosquito nets and various other ways to avoid the repellent them. To, repellent repellent okay. to avoid them. Then for those that you can get inside your body, by swallowing, mm. drinking of contaminated water, water, eating of food that is not properly cooked, and the rest of them. For those ones, your preventive measure is just to watch what you eat. Make sure you drink good water, make sure you eat good food. Mm. Because those are the ways in which these parasites enter the body. Mm. Then there are some, again, that can enter your body by penetrating through the skin. Mm particularly in riverine areas. Oh, yes. So what you do in that case, avoid bare body contact with water. Okay. Even on the land, there is hookworm yes. infection. We must have heard of hookworm yes, infection. Hook mm. The mode of infection is by penetrating through the skin. On broken skin. So no what, what people on advise? On broken yes. skin, no yes. injury on the skin. They possess that capacity to 
penetrating. Okay, so is it impossible for one to see it? At least when something is... No, it's so it, tiny. It's so very tiny. It's very tiny. You can't see it. Can't it see. When, it's when it enters the body that it starts to grow, mm. to become big. But it penetrates through the skin and enters mm. the body. Without, without, without the host knowing. You won't know. It will look like a pin touching you. You may just go and scratch there, but it has already entered. Hmm. So what you do with those ones is to make sure you wear shoes. I'm beginning to be afraid, though. Yeah, no, don't be afraid. <laughs> don't be. <laughs> there are things we have been living with for years. Yes. So what you do with those ones is make sure you wear shoes. That is where, why they tell people when you are moving out, wear, wear shoes. shoes. You go to some warm, damp areas, wear your shoes. Wear clothes so that those parasites will not enter your body. Yeah, I'm just trying to imagine for someone who lives... Uh, by the river bank or the uh, uh, river Rhine areas, you're asking that person to wear clothes to go do his business by the waters, you know? Those are some of the hiccups. Those are some of the problems that hmm. are there. But they that could, is what uh, there's probably a adopt a method of uh, either wearing boots mm. to fetch the water from the rivers or yes. stream and then go a distance away from the stream. And then most times, particularly like uh, what we call urinary schistosomiasis, you could What's uh, that one? There's a passage of blood in urine also caused okay. by a parasite. By is a tremendous oh. the parasite. So okay. they could avoid going to the streams early in the mornings, in the mornings. because these are the early, uh, that's the time the, the intermediate hosts for these parasites usually come out. Mm. They are so well made that they can recognize a human fit and differentiate from an animal fit. Mm. So once it's a human, they know it's human and then they it attracts towards, them. It attracts them and, and then. They, so those are the physical chemical properties of mm. the human uh, makeup that also attract these intermediate hosts okay. to get them Okay, as, as scientists and uh, parasitologists, what, and I know that you have a society, you belong to the parasitology. And public health society. And public health society and as scientists. Is there anything you're doing different, you know? Because, tell you the truth, this diseases have been living with us. We have been living with them. They've yes. been there for forever, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So is that because sometimes we wonder if uh, we have uh, scientists, Nigerian scientists, who are really doing something in this field. You know, most times we say this person is a scientist, this one is a scientist. But when you go on social media, you hear what this a scientist from the UK, this scientist from America, uh, this scientist from, uh, you know, you name it, all countries. You see, this is what they do. Uh, once in a while, we don't hear about Nigerians, but not Nigerians that are domiciled in Nigeria, but Nigerians that are outside the country. At least they are doing well. Uh, other countries are draining their, their brains, the things that they are supposed to come and use for us here. You know, I, I want to know, is there something you people are doing in the lab of course, there are so many things that we are doing. Mm. And uh, I'm happy that I'm here today to even mention something like yeah, that. I'm happy that I'm speaking with you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you see, uh, our people in the university system now, yes. we have been training people to join us in sensitizing communities. This we same, work with this communities. People that are running away exactly. Abroad. We go to communities. There's no communities we don't go to. We okay. go to communities so that we don't carry television cameras to go there. We go to communities. We tell them about their diseases that they suffer, how these diseases are caused. Hmm. We start with the the, the 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 eldest man in the community or the onoji of the community. Okay. He, we gather the people. We have had so many interactions like that okay. all over Nigeria. Yes. And then we will tell them the diseases they suffer, mm. the causes of those diseases, mm. and how to prevent the themselves having the diseases. Okay. We do that. Okay. I have produced so many students. So, so, so what about this, government intervention in all of this? And the government research, intervention in terms of experiments, uh, you name it, finance. Government yes. has been intervening, really. Mm. At least you have heard about rollback malaria, mm -hmm. which Obasanjo initiated, mm. gave us mosquito nets, mm. and they were free of charge. Yeah. Mm. Till tomorrow. People go there to collect the mosquito nets, and you are told don't allow yourself to be beaten by mosquito. Mm. If you are not beaten by mosquito, you cannot have malaria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one has been worked out since 1899 by Ronald Ross. Mm. 
a white man. So uh, apart from malaria, what so about the others? Others, they all have preventive measures. And we tell them when we get to communities. Government has been supporting their way through Ministry of Health. Yes. My Ministry of Health. There has been uh, some other foreign bodies that also come. Mm. World Health Organization. Mm. Global 2000 was mm. with us for okay. Guinea warm eradication. Mm. And on Kosekasi's control program, or that River Blindness Foundation, mm. they have been with us for the control of river blindness. Mm. We have been to communities. Our mm. scientists are really working. Mm. They are all over the place. Mm. It's already probably they don't have much of the So what's the, what's the level of success? Emphasis basically it's on uh, prevention. Yes. And then that will ultimately lead to control of mm. the various entities. Mm. And uh, these prevention measures my prof had already talked about. But, but you can re echo the preventive measures as we round up now so that yes, uh, okay. people will know okay, part of what and what to do. Apart from uh, malaria, the other ones. The, those that live in endemic communities where you have onchocerciasis like they talked about, mm. avoid being bitten by the flies. Exactly. Because most of them you find wear clothing that cover their hands and trousers and up to their necks. Up to their necks. We have done a lot of researches in endemic communities even within those states. Okay. Then for those, for the schistosomiasis, mm. government in some of those communities have even provided the boreholes for the people, for the people. and so then they stop, they stop going to the rivers. So that they drink good water. They drink mm, water as well. Mm. Uh, but they still don't, they prefer going to the streams and all the rivers and mm. all that. So if they are able to follow some of these preventive measures, and then mm. most importantly, is the drugs that are being distributed are they for free? free. They are free. They are free. The drugs are free. They are yeah. free. They are free. Wow. They are free. The, the drugs, you won't believe, go as far as the most remote communities in our states just for them to take this drug. I mm -hmm. remember a research I did in my time. No, go ahead. Okay, please. a research we did. We were looking at the children being reservoir hosts, okay. and these children were not given the avamatin yeah. drug to prevent onchocerciasis wow. in the community. So yeah. at the end of it all, we recommended through the NOJ to the primary health coordinators and all officers, the need to give the children but half drugs, of, the drug. of the drug. And the drugs are also very, very uh, good. Okay. They also prevent um, intestinal parasites mm. because you find the children, when they pass a uh, stool, mm. they also ex uh, excrete some of these parasites. Okay. Prof, you have to like uh, tell us uh, uh, a word of advice before we leave now. Mm. Well, to be very frank, most people in rural areas know about these diseases, but their greatest problem is lack of infrastructure and facilities. Okay. They don't have good water. There are no good roads to get there. They don't eat good food. You cannot tell somebody who doesn't have clothes to be dressing up. Yes. So all these ones, lack of facilities, lack mm. of infrastructure, lack of complete awareness mm. is what is militating against this privilege. Okay, when, when, when next we meet on this platform, because this is not going to be the first and last, we're going to meet again on this platform so that we can discuss more on how to make we're sure that all like of that. this gets to we're those who are really like affected that. by this uh, Thank you very neglected much. Uh, tropical diseases. So, Professor Kaka, thank you for finding time to be with much, us. Dr. Thank Adi you. Amy, thank you. Very it's been a pleasure, pleasure to talk to you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, what they say is enough for the wise. So, if you live in these areas where we have all of these neglected tropical diseases, please do as uh, Prof. said and Dr. Adi Amy. We'll see you again next week. Bye bye.